What's up guys, how's it going? I haven't made a video on this channel in a long time, so I thought I could make videos for two channels, but I just don't have the time for it. Unfortunately, I'm just focusing on my main channel, so I'll try to get a couple videos once in a while on this channel. So I have a fan here and it's plugged in. You can see that there is electricity there. So let's turn it on and nothing. It's a lot of things that could go wrong with the fan. You can see that it's not working. Now, of course, the most common thing is that it needs lubricating. I spin the fan here, you can see that it's turning and so it's nothing to do with the lubricating of the of the motor. Now that's a really simple thing to do if you if you want to spend the time to fix the fan. I've I've got so many fans given to me where they just need to be oiled. Oiling the fan isn't really that difficult to do, but with this fan here, it's nothing to do with with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it apart and then I'm going to look inside. We're going to see if there's any physical damage. I never recommend doing any of these projects or any of these repairs when it comes to electricity. Play it safe go to electrician, go to someone that's qualified, take a course, go to, go to school, learn how to work around electricity before doing any of these projects. At least if you're going to try, then take it to someone that's qualified and let them inspect it before you plug it in. Oh, we see dust in here, so possibly the fan's overheated from this dust accumulating in here. So the first thing we're going to look at, we're going to look at the windings. And you can see here, these are the windings on the stator. So we're going to take a look at those, because a common thing will happen is the windings will actually burn out. They'll be black, they'll be overheated. So you can look in here, and you can see that these look in really nice shape. So there is no overheating damage on the, on the windings. It looks pretty good. So we want to get all the dust out of here. We can blow it out with compressed air. Take a look at the parts of the motor. Now here's the stator. Inside the motor you can see these laminated pieces of metal. These are actual soft iron pieces. And here are the windings of the motor. These are copper windings that wrap around through the stator. So, and now if we look in here, here's the rotor. And the rotor is this piece of aluminum and soft iron in here. And here's the, the motor shaft. And here's a capacitor. There's, here's the switch. And this here is the gearing for the, the oscillation. So you pull this out and then it, it's, it's free and you push it in and it oscillates. So it will not turn on. So it could be many things, but we can take a look at the switch. The switch looks like it's in okay condition. All the wires are connected. If we look in here, all the wires are connected. So an idea what's wrong with this motor before even touching it. Now, a lot of these motors, here, what happens is the the bearings just go dry, and you have to oil them. So they they basically they stick, and the motor will not start up. It'll just sit there, and it'll be stuck. So an, an easy thing to do is to take the motor apart. You can try dripping oil in here, and lubricating it, but you need to get to the 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 bearing in the back here, and it's it's kind of difficult to get to. You can see in here. There's a bearing back there, so you need to get the oil in there. So to take this whole thing apart, you have to take these screws out and then pull off the, the, the cover, pull the rotor out, lubricate the bearing in the back here, and lubricate the bearing in the front. And then the motor will work again. But that's only if the motor is actually functioning. You can sort of feel it uh, trying to work, but it's, it's stuck. So with this motor, that's not the problem. See here, there's this little thing that has a little insulator over it, and it has two wires coming out and it's going and it's basically wire tied to the the coils here so that is our thermal protector so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut that off to get it out of there so that's the little thermal protector you can see right on there it's 115 degrees celsius so what we're going to do is to see if this is the problem with this motor i'm just going to pull the thermal protector out what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach the two wires. Basically, I'm just going to twist it like that. And then I'm going to hook this motor back up very carefully here. We're going to set it down All right, this way. So I already have it on. So I'm going to plug it in now and see if the fan will turn on. And then that'll let me know if that's the thermo tech. Wow. Like I didn't already know that, but anyway. <laughs> so it doesn't always mean that replacing this thermal protector will repair the motor. So if the thermal protector has tripped out and it has uh, disconnected this uh, circuit here, then basically the motor may have physical damage. The coils may be burned out somewhere and there may be a short. So it doesn't always mean that you can just replace this and the fan's gonna be okay. So you have to 
test it out, see if the motor has torque. Um, and then if it doesn't, if the motor is, is weak or it just stops, it turns and stops, then the motor's uh, basically garbage. There's no point in, in trying to repair these, these coils here because it's, it's way too much uh, work unless you want to take it all apart and, and repair the burnt coil, uh, but that's kind of ridiculous. Okay, so we determined that that's the problem. Very simple. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to unsolder this thermal protector. You, you, could, um, you could actually cut the wires here and then join the new thermal protector to it and solder it and then and then cover it with the insulator, tape it up and make sure it's it's well insulated. Uh, another option is, is to unsolder it off this board here. You can see there's one wire here, one wire here. Basically, you can just cut this off, take it into electronics uh, supply store or whatever and then match it up. And So the only discouraging thing about making these uh, repair videos is that some people may want to skip the part of replacing this and then they're just going to run the fan without it. Uh, and what could happen is, is this fan could then overheat, get really, really hot, and it could catch on fire. So you do not ever do something like that. That's why that thermal protector's in there. So do not run the fan without that thermal protector. So this video is only for entertainment and educational purposes only, and I do not recommend doing any repairs to, to electrical devices. So that was just a quick diagnosis of a broken fan, and thank you for watching.